Hey, what's up? It's Blake from Low Voltage Nation, and we have something new for you. We got Mick Andrews in the field, First Point Comms, and he is talking about copper fault finding, and I have a lot of questions. Let's get after it. All right, so, so the point... The point of what we're trying to do here is we're going to walk through this video that Mick sent us and he has his gear outside and he's going to be doing some copper fault finding. So I had a quick question, Doug, just right off the bat. Uh, well, first off, Mick, uh, how you doing, man? How, how are things going out there in the field? Yeah, really good, Blake. Thanks for uh, having me on again. This is uh, it's exciting. It's new and uh, it's a bit of fun to, to do these. So thanks again. Yeah, uh, yeah, things are going good, mate. Um, yeah, so what you see here is uh, probably one of the more difficult uh, fault finding exercises that we do. So I was actually pretty glad to come across this, you know, right about the time that, you know, you and I have been talking about maybe putting some more content on. So, um, yeah, it was uh, the the machine, one of the testers that you see me bring out here is uh, it's not something that, you know, I do use every day. So, um, yeah, it's sort of really uh, good timing with this one. Yeah, so you mentioned that it says moisture. You, uh, you, you're out here because of the moisture. Now, is that something that's like common? And like, is there any way to prevent that? Or like, what, what's the deal with all the moisture? <laughs> sure. So it's really based on the the age that the you know these copper cables have been under the ground. Um, yeah, some of these cables have been under the ground for you know 30, 40 years, or even more. Um, and yeah, it's just natural that the you know moisture gets in uh, into the cable somewhere. So the more modern uh, type of underground cable actually has like a, a grease almost uh, through the cable itself, and that stops moisture from getting in. But the older style cable didn't have any uh, waterproofing barrier inside it. And, uh, you know, so the, you know, just over time, you know, a little bit of moisture actually seeps inside a cable. Um, if you imagine even just a Cat 5 cable, if you held that out in the rain, you know, upside down or, you know, pointing up towards the sky, held it out in the, in the rain for you know let's say a couple of weeks um you imagine that the you know the the rain the water would seep down actually inside the cable and uh and that's just sort of the problems that we come across uh out in the field and um you see there's there's uh you know first of all you have to diagnose you know uh, what the issue is and then try and pinpoint where the issue is along the cable run and uh you know as you see from this video uh the tools that we use um you know you yeah be very difficult to do it without these tools yeah so right right now we're looking at this this multimeter uh what do you know yep. what like the make and model of this bad boy i've never seen anything like this obviously there's like uh a difference between what we do in the states there might be some different tools a lot of this doesn't look yeah. very familiar but I, i'm also not very seasoned with uh these yeah. types of tools so what what are we looking at right now this, this type of a multimeter so what us technicians, we call this a lines test set, and it's actually version two of that. And uh, funny, funny, just a quick uh, side story. I actually remember growing up as a kid, I think one of my dad's friends used to do this job, and I actually, I still see him uh, every now and then. And uh, actually, I won't, I'll try not to divert too much here, but uh, and as a kid, I reckon he gave me or my dad got off him a version one of this i still i just remember the words lines test set uh you know one of the little things i would tinker around with as a kid so this is the the version two but um i know it does look a bit unusual uh but it really just is a multimeter but it just has three legs on it so instead of just your traditional you know red and black uh they just throw in a third leg so we can uh just so you can flick between you know what you're testing because you're really testing uh the green wire goes on either a screwdriver in the ground, so you actually get a, a genuine earth, um, or in this case, I just connected it to the frame, which is earth. But it's really just a multimeter um, giving you, you know, some values. Uh, you know, the voltage, right. yes. voltage yes. shock, yes. or you yeah, so that's, it does look a bit um, unusual, but uh, essentially that's, that's all it is. You mentioned that uh, you're, you're testing for voltage first and foremost. Like, what could what could cause yeah. voltage? Is that something common that happens in this scenario, or what would be causing uh, any voltage? Sure. So, uh, I'm not sure how your copper lines work in the states, but uh, the the way the copper lines used to work, and it's only really been in the last few years that this has changed uh, in Australia, anyway. But there still are some copper lines out there that have uh, what we know as a dial tone, but it's actually a 48 volt DC. 
uh, source that's that's sent down the lines. So um, every you know, when you all of those pairs that we saw on the on that pillar thing there uh, is really a, a forty eight volt DC you know uh, source coming at you, which gets fed from the exchange, and in exchange, just a, a large battery bank sending this forty eight volt DC down every pair of wires. Uh, so that's where the the voltage will be coming from, from just other lines yeah, that are active. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the moisture you're getting in there or just, you know, um, you know, makes the, the voltage sort of, you know, cross over onto other lines. So, um, yeah, you know, when, uh, when all these, uh, when the broadband in Australia is completely changed over to this new style that we're heading towards, there should not be any voltage coming down the line. Um, so I suppose, yeah, to answer your question, it's not uh, it's not a faulty type thing. It's not like a uh, electrical you know thing has gone faulty. It's nothing like that. It's more just interference from other lines that may still have the voltage on it. Right, and then so you said that there, as I, as you watch this video, you mentioned that there is actual moisture causing <clears throat> an issue. Uh, uh, are you just like speculating on that, or like how do you how do you know there's moisture? Sure. So. Um, the, the third leg that you see on the multimeter, the green one, so we – how do I explain it? If, if, you, if you touch that to earth, right, as in earth, as in the ground earth, and you attach one of the other legs of the multimeter to one of the lines, the, what you're seeing there is a bit of current looping back through the ground and back through the earth into your multimeter. So you've, you may have done it before, you know, even on your own skin. if you uh, just test your your own skin for the, just the moisture on your skin will produce, uh, you know, will give some resistance. So there's almost like a yeah. So the current can travel along your skin through through the moisture. So it's the same same idea as that. Just the earth is uh, a big um, you know a big source of of moisture of water for. Uh, so you know that's how you can sort of test that there is moisture getting the line because you're getting that return feed back to your multimeter uh, through the ground through the earth. Mm, yeah. Makes sense. So there's actually a, a time in this video where you're like, I had to call the, I had to call the customer and tell them to short <laughs> out the line. Like, yes. how, does that, how does that how does that uh, call go exactly? Are they like, what are you talking about? Do what to my line? <laughs> yeah, so I, uh, that you probably guess it's probably not the first call I made to the customer. So um, right. when we go out to to fix a line, you know. Uh, I like to, anyway, I like to, you know, because on our work order, we get their mobile number or their, their cell phone number. So, you know, you call them and say, hi, I'm the, the technician. I'm just about to do some work on your line. And, and they say, you know, whether they are home or not. And um, the to skip ahead to the, the short circuit, um, because the modems, in this case, they plug into the, uh, the DSL port on the back of the modem. Um, if you actually... Uh, plug that will remove that cable out of the correct port and if you try and plug it into one of the ethernet ports it actually gives a short circuit because on the uh you know on the ethernet ports the the middle pair is the blue white pair and that's sh actually short circuited inside the uh the modem itself mm -hmm. um so yeah it's just a, a quick and easy way to put a short circuit on the line um, is to ask the you know ask them to gently plug the uh, the telephone cable connection uh, into the back of one of the yellow uh, LAN ports on the back of the modem, which mm -hmm. uh, then you know we see as a short, and that's what that uh, oh, that okay. little grey tester needs a short circuit uh, to to give the reading back. Yeah, I can just kind of see the customer like shaving off the ends of a cable, <laughs> trying to like create this little like jumper between like some some jack or something. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And look at depending on depending on the uh the skill level of the person, yeah, you don't often you don't say, Oh, I'm trying to create a short circuit. You just say, Oh, just unplug it out of that port and just plug it into that port quickly and um right yeah i got you and then at this end you you know your multimeter you see the needle goes right up here in the red and and that means they've plugged it into the correct port so then you so uh, in, in actual fact this guy here I, I probably called him up about six times um because often <laughs> these uh the things that we diagnose often they they really are a two-man job um but you're, sure. you're yep. there by yourself and as you see here i'm uh putting my um my kneeling pad kneeling mat over the the barbed wire fence there 
Yeah, so, that's a, um, you learned that in prison, man, huh? Have you been locked <laughs> up recently? <laughs> no, I hope, we'll, I hope we'll never have to experience that one. But uh, no, you sort no. of, you, do, you definitely learn to fend for yourself and, um, <laughs> you know, uh, turn, a, turn a two-man job into a one-man job. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. We have, when you have to, I guess, uh, recruit people in the field, you're, you're kind of, re- at least I am, I'm reluctant. I don't want to have to ask people to do stuff, but you just have to do it sometimes. Like, hey, I need some help please you know, this will go 10 times faster <laughs> look you do you do and and look even um guys like myself we we work alone but we're you know we're in a group we all work for the same company we just spread sure. out around the uh you know around different suburbs and sometimes you're right sometimes even just a phone call to you know one of your mates to say oh you know what would you do here or because sometimes when you're in that moment you're you know you maybe you you think you know how to fix something whereas you know someone else's perspective may have been freshened up your eyes and and then you go oh yeah what didn't i think of that so um sometimes yeah. that's you know a phone call is the help that you need so that's a really cool point because what's happening with me uh with low voltage nation is that i'll text somebody on, i'll dm somebody on instagram or send a picture or a video and say yep. hey how do i write this this query for this database or how do i install this access control system and like yep. it's become like this massive resource for me. Like all throughout the day, I'm communicating with people on Instagram because of yep. Low Voltage Nation, and it's become an incredible for me. It's become an incredible resource, and that yep. was the initial goal. Was it? Was it? Uh, to, it was to help other people, you know, uh, in the field and, and carve out a fulfilling career path. But it's also like it's doing that for me at the same time. It's a pretty cool yep. thing. Yeah, you're getting that help back as well. Yeah, and uh, oh yeah, that's it's, for it's sure. nice when it's nice when you come across other people that like helping as well you know oh, a yeah. lot of people oh, get yeah. enjoyment out of you know giving and, and helping others to grow it's pretty cool yeah so uh how often does this this uh scenario occur this uh type of uh fault finding scenario so yeah look this is this is sort of the thing that we do on a, on a daily basis yeah. um Figured. this one itself was was pretty intense and it was pretty uh took a long time <laughs> to you know pinpoint diagnose and then uh you know, think up a solution around it. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is generally sort of the type of thing you'd uh, you'd see guys like myself do. You know, we're out, we're outside, we're outdoors, we're yeah. uh, you know, sometimes climbing over fences or looking through other people's front yards and um, getting you know, the police called on you sometimes. <laughs> well, yeah, usually in general you know, in Australia, I think we're we're a friendly sort of a bunch, and we sort of yeah. you know, if somebody was to. Yeah, sometimes you know you do get approached, but uh, often it's it's a bit of a friendly face first, or it's a friendly gotcha. you know uh, you know sort of a conversation first. What do you you know? Oh, how are you going? What are you doing? And um, yeah, as soon as you say what you're doing, you know, you're just fixing up the the broadband cables, and and uh, you know it breaks that uh, breaks that barrier down and breaks the ice sure. fairly quickly. And uh, you know, every second person has a has a story that they've you know had problems with their own Wi-Fi in the past. Yeah. So. Um, yep. <laughs> and uh yeah so but uh no yeah, yeah that kind of, yeah that kind of brings me to uh, the next question is how long did this this service call take entirely so oh, over an hour i'd say yeah. probably just under two hours uh because there's a bit of driving that you don't see um sure. oh, yeah. i think it, maybe at the start or sort of when i'm uh, at the pillar itself i do pan over and you can see like a, a tree line um, that's actually the, the street I had to get to, but that's a no through road. It's just a walking track. So, uh, you know, you do a lot of driving, you, you definitely do a lot of driving. There's a lot of, a lot of time wasted in there. Um, and this is, so this platform I'm working on now is known as fiber to the node F T T N. Um, other ones you may have heard me talk about or, or anyone follow me on Instagram may have seen was a different, a similar platform F T T C. Sure. And on that platform, you don't drive at all. You, you're parked out front of the at the front of the customer's house for the entire duration, and you know you don't have to walk as far. So um, yeah, this fiber to the node definitely it's a it's a lot more involved chasing a fold on this. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what what tools would you need? Obviously, you need this multimeter and and some copper testing yeah. mechanisms. But like, what other tools uh, did you use on this service call? Like cutters or you know snips or like what else? What else you got going on? Yeah. So on this one in particular, I had quite a few tools out. Um, yeah. So first of all, it's the yeah definitely the multimeter, the uh, the quanti tool, which is that little red 
uh, punching tool, which is similar to a crone tool. Okay. Um, definitely the snippers out. I had uh, tone generators working at both ends, so one coming from the from the customer's house and then another one from the pillar back that way because the, the ground or the earth fault that I was chasing here, that was actually the second fault. The uh, So often you'll when you're working on a problem like this, you'll you'll find the main problem, which is maybe just a you know an open circuit somewhere. But often after you fix that initial fault, which would get the servers up and running, then you do these other tests and you see, oh well, there's also a bit of moisture in the line. I might as well chase that out as well. So it's um, yeah. So to do that, yeah, you need uh, yeah. Often tone generators going both ways. Uh, sometimes I even get the soldering iron out at the end, depending on the type of connectors at the pillar there. Um, and that that uh, the grey tool there, the uh, the one that actually pinpointed where the earth fault was. That's um, that's one that I don't yeah don't pull that out too often. Um, but yeah, really had the, had them all going. Yeah, that one there, the uh, CZ three thousand we call that one. And that's I don't know how old that is. I've I've had that my entire time. I've had that since yeah the mid two thousands, and I'm sure the guy before me had it for a long time. Yeah, before that. So, uh, it but, old, but it looked super useful just detecting that uh, that fault and then telling you where it is. You know, that's that's some expensive fluke stuff you gotta buy. But that thing looks old and uh, looks reliable for sure. <laughs> very mate, very reliable. Cool. Uh, what kind of speeds are going through these copper lines? I think you mentioned that it's a hundred megabits a second for Australia. Yeah, so that's sort of the maximum. This is for residential. I don't work yeah. on you know, big business, but just residential in general, uh, about a hundred meg down and 40 up is sort of what our internet providers limit us at the moment. Um, but at the right there at the pillar there, because the node was next to that pillar, the maximum speed is actually about 140. Um, okay. So, but as I said, they, they all get limited down. And and the further you are, further you live away from the node, the, the less that top speed uh, drops down to. So as long as you're within about 400 meters, uh, you'll still get around that yeah, 100 meg is the top speed, and then it uh, it slowly slowly drops off after that. Cool, man. Well, this has been this has been really uh, insightful. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. Please follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We got a group that's on fire, and uh, we also have the three things every low voltage technician should have on lowvoltagenation.com. Please download that and keep getting after it because you, my friend, are Low Voltage Nation. Thank you so much.